Okay, this is the resistance of a re wire required practical. I can't even say it. So resistance of a wire required practical. Like that. Right, and it, it basically comes in two sections. Investigating the factors that affect the resistance of a wire. All right, and number one is we're going to be looking at the length of the wire. And number two is we're going to be looking at a combination of resistors in a series and in parallel. So it kind of comes in two parts. Right, so the equipment, firstly, of the one which is length of a wire. We've got our power supply, we've got our ammeter, we've got our voltmeter, we've got little crocodile clips, you know, those annoying things that people kind of clip onto things that they shouldn't clip onto. The orange wire there, right, is, which is now blue, is our um, nichrome wire. Uh, we've got a meter ruler. And then we've got all these other wires that then connect things up, right? And that is then the way that the actual circuit's set up. Okay, there's also a switch in there, right? But one of the most important things on this is, and I always do it when I'm setting out circuits, is just literally lie it out flat in front of you and map it out exactly like that. And if it looks like that in front of you when you've actually set up the circuit, then you've done it right. And also remember that an ammeter always goes in series so the electricity passes through it directly and a voltmeter always goes in parallel around the object you're testing <clears throat> right now the practical how does the length of the wire affect the resistance at a constant temperature so what you do is you move the crocodile clip 10 centimeters between each experiment starting at 100 centimeters so what you got is from there to there, right, initially is 100 centimetres, which is obviously a metre. And what you do is using the same voltage, so it could be 12 volts, right, and what you have to do is you have to judge it depending on the equipment that you've got. You do 12 volts there, you've got 100 centimetres of nichrome wire. You write down the voltage and the ammeter onto a table. A table. So you've got the voltage and the current on a table. Then what you do is take it away, unplug it, leave it a little while because some heat does build up, and then you do the gap at 90 centimetres, and then you do 80 centimetres, all right? Then you do 70 centimetres. Now you'll tend not to do less than about 30 centimetres because at 30 centimetres the wire then gets too hot to use. So what you've then done is you've measured the readings on the voltmeter and the ammeter at each distance, move the crocodile clip and record the temperatures every 10 centimetres is then what I've then talked about. What you're then going to do, and I'm going to show you in a second, is a table that shows you how to calculate resistance. Variables, okay, dead important, don't mess, so dependent, mess, measure. What you're going to measure is you're going to measure the voltage and the amps during the practical itself which then kind of leads to you calculating the resistance. Don't mess in class. Independent is what we change. So between experiments, what we're changing then is the length of the wire. Start at 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. And a way of improving it would be to go 90, 95, uh, well, 100, 95, 90, 85, 80, go down in fives. Don't mess in class, stay calm, so same, control is the same, and really the main thing in that is the type of wire then needs to stay the same, which is then nichrome. <clears throat> right, to calculate the resistance, okay, again, I don't particularly like these triangles, right, but if they do help you actually work things out, then that's absolutely fine. So the equation, and it's all based on Ohm's law, is V equals IR. So that is the potential difference equals the current times the resistance. Okay, volts, amps, ohms, which is a funny hat shape thing. All right, if you've got a um, voltage of 7 volts, current of, let's say, 14 amps times the diabella resistance, all right, then what you can do is you can use your triangle if you want to, put your finger over the resistance. You can then see it's volts divided by amps. Personally, once I've substituted in the numbers, so I've got 7 volts, 14 amps, and I'm working out the resistance, 
I then just like to use a bit of algebra, rearranging the formula, so I then do 7. The 14 goes over to the other side, because if it's times on one side, it becomes divide on the other, equals resistance. 7 divided by 14 is 0.5 ohms as your answer. Okay, and then there's another example at the bottom here, how to use it uh, when you're given the current and the resistance. This is then approximately what your table may well look like. All right now, the way this table is, I just Googled it because you never know what a table is going to look like. They've started at 70 and they've gone all the way down to 10 centimetres. For 70, they've done three recordings, all remarkably similar. For the current, they've then done three recordings, again, all remarkably similar. All right, and then they've calculated the resistance using V equals IR. Okay, and then what I would then tend to do is on the end here, Right, I would then do a mean, right, and I would probably just to save my sums a little bit. There, I'd have done a mean for current, and there, I'd have done a mean for voltage. Okay, that's very, very badly written, but if, if you listen to it, it's all there. Um, 10 centimeters, the voltage is very similar, the current varies slightly, the resistance is kind of varies a little bit as well. But then what you need to do, you need to do your mean. This is then what your graph looks like. Okay. Now, again, what you've got to do is you've just got to be very careful when they're actually asking the questions themselves. So I've talked so far about centimetres. This graph here, all of a sudden, they've chucked it in as metres. Right? So make sure when you're actually looking at it, you know exactly what they're asking you to do. Resistance down that side in ohms. Right? And what you can do is you can see... Uh, the points aren't in a perfect straight line, but what they've done is they've done a line of best fit, right, where there's a similar number underneath and a similar number that way. And it doesn't necessarily have to go through any points at all. In fact, it only really goes through one point. Now, what does this graph tell you? As the length increases, the resistance increases. Okay, pretty obvious. As the length increases, the resistance increases. Resistance and length are directly proportional, right? If ever you see a graph that is a straight line like that, right, I would personally just write down directly proportional, all right? Even if it's something that isn't necessarily the most valid thing, if you write down directly proportional, right, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get some sort of credit for it. Another thing you can do with the graph is, once you've drawn your line of best fit on, and you've got that graph done, they might say, what is the resistance at 0.45 metres? So, 0.45 metres, go over to here, 0.5, you obviously use a ruler, right? You go up to the line, you go across, and the resistance there is approximately 10 ohms, right? Uh, that's a good way of actually using the graph. Now, there are two kind of problems with this practical itself. The first one is something called the zero error, right? And what it is, it's when you put your kind of crocodile clip almost on zero centimetres, the resistance should be zero ohms. But what it tends to be, it tends not to be. It tends to have a little bit of resistance. And it's because of the way that the kind of the crocodile clip and things like that may well be set up. In theory, right, if it's 0.06 ohms, the uh, when you've got zero, when you should be getting zero resistance, theoretically you should take it away, right, from your actual results. However, um, I'll be very surprised if they kind of talk about or expect you to calculate anything like that. But you just need to be aware that there could be resistance even when you don't expect resistance. And the second one is, as you uh, uh, reduce the length of the wire, um, the temperature increases. And if the temperature increases, it affects the resistance. So what you should do is, as soon as you connect it all up on, so, say, 30 centimetres, you should take your recordings immediately, because they will change as the wire actually gets hotter. And then in between time, so if you do 30 centimetres, and then you are going to do 20 centimetres, what you should then do is you should unplug it, let it cool down, and then again do it immediately. Number two, how does the arrangement of resistors in series and parallel affect resistance? Now these circuits are relatively straightforward to set up, right? So what you've got is you've got your power source, 
you've got a switch, you've got an ammeter that is in series, because you're in series, that's your circuit itself. And then you've got a voltmeter that is in parallel, because voltmeters always go around the object. Okay? Uh, and what you find then is you find that you then set it up exactly the same with a parallel circuit, where this time you've got a circuit like that and a circuit like that. So there's two routes that electricity can then go. Again, voltmeter is in parallel. When you're setting it up, the circuit diagram needs to be set up in, uh, as it is on those diagrams there. Switch it on and record the readings of the ammeter and voltmeter. You literally only need to do the practical once. Calculate the total resistance of the series circuit. Right? So if that could be 6 ohms and that could be 4 ohms, that could be 6 ohms and that could be 4 ohms. Right? So what you do then is using your experiment itself, you can then calculate the resistance of each individual circuit. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go through the proof. So what you've done, you've done the practical before and you'd have been able to calculate the resistance. So before I said you've got a 6 ohm resistor, this is the series circuit and a 4 ohm resistor. Right, and what they are then is they're kind of in line with each other, just like I showed you on the previous diagram. You then, using your experiment and using V equals IR, so you'll do V divided by I equals the resistance, right? You should then be able to look at the resistance. In an exam itself, what they might do is they might say, what is the resistance of the circuit? And what you would then do is you'd kind of use this sort of equation thing at the top, where the total resistance is resistance 1, add to resistance 2, add to, add to, add to, and it keeps on going. So if I've got a 6 ohm and a 4 ohm, Right, what I would then do is I would do resistance is 6 plus 4, so the total resistance is 10 ohms for that circuit. And literally, all you do is you add them up. Now, resistors in parallel are slightly different. Okay? Now, there's two ways of looking at it. The simplest way is, if they ask you about the resistance in parallel, you can always say the resistance in parallel is always lowest or lower than the lowest resistor. All right, so if you've got a circuit and the lowest resistor is 4 ohms, the resistance in that circuit is always going to be less than 4 ohms. All right, so that is a simple way of actually giving an answer, and it's also a bit of a check. Now, the resistors in parallel equation is 1 over R total equals 1 over R1, 1 over R2, etc., etc. Now, the example I've given here, right, I've got on here um, four resistors. I've got a 10 ohm in parallel, I've got a 20 ohm, I've got a 30 ohm, and I've got a 40 ohm. 10 ohm, 20 ohm, 30 ohm, and I've got 40 ohm. And what they are is 10 ohms, 20 ohms, 30 ohms if there was an R there, 40 ohms. Then, on your calculator, you do 1 divided by 10, which gives you 0 0.1, 1 divided by 20, 1 divided by 30, 1 divided by 40. Okay, then you add them up. And if you add all those up, it comes to 0 0.2083. To work out the actual resistance of the circuit, then what you do is you do 1 over 0 0.2083. 0.83. Put that in your calculator, and the answer comes out at 4.8 ohms. All right, so that's like the mathematical way of doing it. And again, if you look, resistance in parallel is always lower than the lowest resistor. The lowest resistor I had in my circuit then was 10 ohms, and my final answer is 4.8 ohms. So that kind of backs it up. Okay, so this practical is a good one, right? Because not only have you got methods. Right, but you've also got circuits, and what you need to do is you need to be able to understand what exactly is happening with the circuit. You've also got V equals IR, right? and I'd be very surprised on any exam in any year that V equals IR doesn't come up. So then you've got your units, which is potential difference volts, current in amps, resistance in ohms. Then you've also got your resistance, right? where it's R1 plus R2, right? Uh, is in a series circuit, and then you've got 1 over R1 and plus 1 over R2, all right, etc., in a parallel circuit. And you've also then got series circuits, and you've got parallel circuits. So in that, you need to have a very, very broad kind of knowledge of all the stuff to then to do with electricity. 
right? So if you're a little bit unsure about anything, play the video again, right? And then go through and make sure you understand every part of it.